Toxicology is a major division in chemical examiners laboratory and almost all the forensic laboratories in the world. In Kerala, most of the toxicology samples were received in chemical examiners laboratory rather than forensic science laboratories. And nowadays, the work of a toxicologist is a challenging task because of the variety of cases, variety of queries, and the nature of samples, combination of drugs, new drugs, challenges in adopting newer technologies, and in some sometimes the social circumstances also demand some amount of accuracy, precision, and we have to go for trace level analysis, metabolite analysis, and so. I hope, I hope a few words about my department also. Actually, Chemical Examination Laboratory is one of the major forensic testing laboratories in India. All our three laboratories are ISO IEC 17025 NABL accredited. It is the first time that all the regional labs and main labs are accredited in India. And regarding the scope and the nature of works we have done, yearly about 1 lakh material objects in about 30,000 cases are received in chemical examiners laboratories and reports are sent to various courts. I'm saying this, all this quantum of work is done by only about 80 or 81 scientists present in this department. They are doing a tremendous work. One lakh plus samples in 12 months by about 80 scientists. I use this opportunity to congratulate all my staff for achieving this. And in a statistics wise, in 2013 or 14, we are receiving only 800 narcotic samples for analysis per year. Now in 2019, it is about 10,000. That means about 15 times increase. And in toxicology also, per month, we used to receive 600 to 700 cases per month. Now it is increased to 1,200 to 1,500. That means the quantum of work is increasing. Tremendous pressure is on the analysts. So we have to go for modern technology, modern techniques, easier techniques without compromising quality. That is the motto of the next generation forensic analysis. And we have almost all the modern analytical instruments in our laboratories. GCMS, LCMS, FTIR, UV, GCs, and almost all modern <coughs> analytical instruments are available with us. And as part of accreditation, 
Only validated methods are applied. Only calibrated instruments are used. Certified reference materials are used. But the challenges are more. So the topics we have selected today is of great importance and relevance. Because every time we have to go for new techniques, validated methods, easier methods to compensate for the challenges we are facing. Anyway, today we got an experienced person and an apt person to discuss a new technology, biochip array technology. In forensic toxicology. We are of this method for our the detection of drugs, alcohols, etc. in body fluids. You, you all know this extraction and the detection from body fluids if this method is suitable we can go for it I appreciate the organizers The topic is presented by Mr. Anil Patmanapan, International Sing for forensic supporter also of Randox Toxicology and Randox Food Diagnostics is based in UK. I am sure the participants will be benefited and updated by this presentation. With your permission and on behalf of Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association, I welcome Mr. Anil Padmanapan for this session. I hand over the Thank session you. to him. Have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Jay Kumaran and Dr. Shiva Prasad for this wonderful opportunity. So before starting, I'm ensuring that my voice is clear. Yes, I know. And you can continue. Yeah. And everybody can hear. I, I'll start my, I'll share my presentation slide. Hold on for a second. I believe my slide is visible in your screen now. Yes, Anil. Continue. Please continue. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to one and all. I normally go to the presentation directly. Wherever I do, I mean, I just go to Randox and I start my presentation. But I was thinking yesterday, like, uh, that is not the proper way here because when I started talking with international, sorry, Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association, I think around six months ago, I really felt a difference because I, I'm a member in few international associations where I felt, I really felt a difference with the ICFSA. The reason is most of the associations where I interact with are limited to a closed circle of people like either it is clinical toxicologist or forensic toxicologist. However, when it comes to ICFSA, I found two peculiar characteristics. One is the diversity 
and second one is its commitment so the diversity what i felt is it has a group of the members are from different origins like the forensic expert the judicial officers then it has students it has the post mortem surgeons the police officers the different key opinion leaders who mainly the part of the administrative as well as judicial judicial system in india which definitely need a high level of appreciation to the to the management committee of this association and the second thing what i noticed is the commitment of the management committee because whenever i talk to dr shiva prasad he always talk about new technologies so the concept of transformation through technology when he discuss with me i really felt that the effort he is taking to present and empower the members with the new technologies updated information etc to to strengthen the community is also need a high level of appreciation so i thought i would i would appreciate this and then i will move forward with my presentation so once again on behalf of randox it is purely a scientific company with a strong research and development team based in uk uh we sincerely thank the management committee of uh, indian uh, criminology and forensic science association for providing an opportunity to present our technology to the various forensic expert throughout the nation and i also found there are participants from some of the far east countries and other countries other than india so good morning once again and good afternoon to those who joined from far east we will start the session now so as uh, dr jay kumar Uh, introduced me my name is anil and i work with a company called randox toxicology so the people those who don't know about randox toxicology it is a company based in the united kingdom we started in 1982 it was it was a story like uh, the 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 person called dr peter fitzgerald he is a clinician by profession he started this organization with the five of his classmates back in 1982 and the objective of starting the company is to manufacture the clinical chemistry reagents and in the last past it developed its own technology and grown into five different verticals and that are the randox clinical chemistry division randox toxicology division randox food diagnostics division randox bioscience and randox health so if i brief you the randox clinical chemistry company it is the world third largest clinical chemistry provider uh, today and randox toxicology is the company where i am working and we are talking about the product today randox food diagnostics and randox bioscience is relatively new smaller within the company however it helps a lot to ensure that the food what we are eating every day are safe we we provide the testing solution for food ensuring that our foods are antibiotic free steroids free hormone free pesticide free etc etc so i mean mycotoxin free etc etc all the, i mean the food it's very difficult to get a clean food today all of us know about it people are worried about pesticides but pesticides are just one factor there are so many other contaminants which harm your health a lot by eating the food what we are eating every day so we provide the testing solution for that then randox bioscience is very noticeable nowadays because the entire world is going through a very difficult time we are fighting against an invisible enemy called sars corona virus or the so called covid 19 So Randox Bioscience is basically a molecular vertical of our company and it provides molecular solutions for the detection and diagnostics of various virus pathogens which harm our health uh, in in day to day basis. So we developed a proper testing for COVID-19 from nasal and throat swabs which we will be discussing later and one of the peculiarity of Randox Bioscience is the test which is developed for covid-19 by randox bioscience is the high having the highest sensitivity which is available in the world today it is 50 viral particles and with a high specificity at dr jay kumar and sir mentioned little while ago the sensitivity the specificity 
are playing a very vital role in providing the accurate results for the diagnostic test. So we are committed to that there. And Randox Health is basically a, a kind of uh, uh, hospitals, clinics, and testing laboratories. We thought of having uh, these facilities around the world. We started with the US and UK. Uh, and we had a plan to start one in Singapore and one in Dubai, but I'm not completely aware where we stand with that, but that is a division called Randox Health. Now we move forward to Randox Toxicology. So in my knowledge, this is the only one dedicated toxicology company exists today in the world. I ever, never heard there is a company which is dedicated for toxicology market. So Randox Toxicology is purely a scientific organization with a very strong research and development team, dedicated toxicology company. The importance of having a research and development team for a dedicated toxicology company is well known to the forensic as well as the clinical toxicologist. The reason is, you know, the, the, the drugs, what we heard in our childhood and what we are hearing today are entirely different. We heard about amphetamines, barbiturates, we heard about cocaine, we heard about heroin, we heard about uh, various common drugs in the past when we were a child. But today, it grown into a different industry where the natural drugs are more expensive, more difficult, but the world chain to manufacture or world starts to produce the synthetic drugs so-called the new psychoactive substances, which is more available, easy to get, and everywhere in the world. So the importance of having a strong research and development team is to find out which are the new drugs coming into the market and to find, find out a, or, or to provide a proper solution to test those drugs as soon as it arrives in the market. So our research and development team are very keen in developing assays for the newly developed drugs. And with this capability or with their capability, today we are capable of detecting more than 600 drug compounds, which is the world largest toxicology test menu than any other company existing in the world. We developed our own technology called biochip array technology. So this is a patented technology from Randox. It is our own developed technology. So how does it work? If you look into the slide, you can see a white square here. The real size of this white square is nine millimeter into nine millimeter. That is nine millimeter square. That is the physical size of this biochip. And this white square is called one biochip. So in this entire cartridge, you have nine different biochips. Here, you can see the magnified view of one single biochip. So as I said, this white square is called one single biochip. And here, what you're seeing is the magnified view of single biochip. Inside the biochip, so inside this white square, you can further see so many white colored dots and each dot is called a test region. We called, I mean, Randox people call it as discrete test region or DTR. You can easily call it as test region. So the possibility so far was having five into five. The picture is different, but the possibility so far was five into five, that was something like 25 test regions. And three of them will go for our internal quality assurance purposes. And the remaining 23 test regions or the white dots will be used for representing 22 different type of drugs inside one single biochip. So it's slightly complicated. What I mean to say is, when you remove three dots, test regions from the total 25 white dots, one white dot will be representing one type of drug called amphetamine. 
The second dot could be representing the second type of drug called barbiturates. The third could be benzodiazepine, etc., etc. You can have up to 22 drugs in one single biochip. So basically, what you need to do is you have to put your sample into the biochip, process it with the, any of the biochip array analyzers, and if any of these drugs are present or multiple of these drugs are present in that particular sample, that will be detected and you get a concentration in milligram per deciliter. So it is a semi-quantitative technology. So as I mentioned, so far, the maximum capacity was 22 different drugs in one single biochip. However, our research and development team has recently found out or produced a new biochip, which has 49 test regions. So in the same size of nine millimeter square, today we have seven in the seven. Seven in the seven. Participants, please make sure that your audio is mute. And it will please continue. Thank you. So seven into seven, that means 49 test regions. And in that four will be used for our internal quality assurance purposes. And the remaining 45 can be used for detecting 45 different drugs from one single sample. So this is something which people can say, wow, especially the forensic toxicologists. How does it work? It is not a complicated technology. It is a well-known immunosy platform and we are using the chemiluminescence technology for the detection. So the target antibody is coated in the surface of the biochip. So if you can see the surf, I mean, the, the, the slide in the screen, this is the surface of the biochip. So this is the white square. And there are four discrete test regions are displayed here. So you can have up to 45 test regions in the surface of a biochip. So what happened is in one single dot, the capture antibodies are coated. What does it mean? If you are testing for amphetamine, this particular dot will be coated with amphetamine antibodies. The second dot, if it is represent, representing cocaine, the antibodies of cocaine are coated all over the surface of the second dot. Then we have barbiturates, probably barbiturates on the third dot, probably benzodiazepines in the fourth dot. So, so and so we can have up to 45 uh, different test regions. Now what happens is you are adding the sample into the biochip. So if the particular person has taken any of the drugs, say cocaine, what will happen is that the proteins associated to the cocaine will be present in the sample. So those proteins or the, uh, will go and stick into the surface of that particular uh, test region representing cocaine. The third step, you are adding your conjugate. So the conjugate is a multi-analyte conjugate. It is enzyme labeled. So if there is no proteins associated to the amphetamine is present in the sample because if the particular person hasn't taken any amphetamine, what happens is those positions will be completely empty and the antigens from the conjugate, which will go and stick, in, stick into the surface of this antibody or the test region. Now, if the sample has proteins of the particular drug, those positions will be occupied by the sample antigen. And if they are not present, then that will be occupied by the proteins from the conjugate. The only difference is here, it is enzyme labeled when it comes to the conjugate, but it is not enzyme labeled when it comes to a sample. The third step is you are adding a signal reagent into the biochip. So what happens is, the signal reagent will go and react with the enzyme and it produces light. So wherever you have the antigen antibody complex formed by sample, there will be enzymes 
And as a result of the chemical reaction within the signal reagent, a light will be emitted from the discrete test region. However, if the particular sample does not have, I'm sorry, if the particular sample does not have any proteins from the, from the sample that will be completely occupied by the conjugate so that all of the antigen antibody complex will have a con will have an enzyme and the signal reagent will react with it and a large amount of light will be emitted from that particular spot. So it is inversely proportional. If a test region is producing large amount of light, that means there is no drug present in the sample. However, if the amount of light which is emitted from the spot is less, that means the antigen antibody complex are created by the proteins from the sample and therefore, there is no enzyme-linked antigen antibody complex formed. Therefore, the light emitted from the particular spot will be less. So it is an inversely proportionate curve where for the low concentration, a high amount of light will be generated. And for high concentration, or the, the low amount of light will be generated. So it's a bit, I mean, if it is a bit confused, it is nothing. It is the basic competitive immunoassay and we are using the chemiluminescence technology for the detection. And at the top of the analyzer, there is a camera, it is called CCD camera, and the camera quantify the light emitted from each test region and then convert that quantity of light into the concentration. Okay, moving forward, the benefit with Randox toxicology is, as I said, with the strength of our research and development team, we have developed a vast list of assays for testing different drugs. So you have the privilege to test your, choose your test. So you just let us know which are the drugs you wanted to test. And then you just tell us which metrics you want to test, what type of sample you want to test. When it comes to the forensic toxicology, the sample type is extremely important as Dr. Jaikumar and sir mentioned during the introductory section that the variety of sample, normally the forensic lab or the clinical chemist, sorry, the chemical examiner lab, examiner lab receives is vast. It is highly diverse. It is absolutely different or extremely different than the clinical toxicology. Now, biochipper technology is validated for blood, whole blood, urine, oral fluid, post-mortem blood, hair. We are validating tissue, vitreous humor, and meconium. So I'm quite sure for a forensic toxicologist, all of these matrices are extremely important. And the second positive thing with biochipper technologies, all of these are already validated. So validating a new matrix for a new drug is a tedious task for any forensic toxicologist. However, when it comes to biochipper technology, it is already validated and therefore you just need to use it as per the instructions given by Randox. It makes your life very, very simple. So today morning I saw there was a there, there was a sharing by one of the one of the one of the member in the in the uh, ICFSA group about the uh, presence of drug in, in the human body, the, I mean the window period. But for me, it is depending on the sample type what you are testing. And the, the requirement, the, the crime scene, the, the, it, it related to so many things. What time the crime has happened or what time the death has happened and what are the available samples based, based upon that, the, the investigation officer or a forensic expert choose the sample matrix. But the disadvantage in the world when it comes to the forensic toxicology is there are no more, I mean, not many screening methodologies are available for all these sample matrices. Most of the screening methodologies are available only for urine today. So that limited to testing urine for drugs of abuse and alcohol. However, everybody knows that it is very easy to adulter a urine sample. And sometimes if the death happened because of a road accident or if the person died 
week ago or month ago, the possibility of getting urine sample is highly, highly unlikely. So in the situation of where the urine samples are not available, biochiparet technology provides the freedom of choosing other possible matrices. Postmortem blood is a highly interested sample matrix here, especially when it comes to the forensic toxicologists, because <coughs> this is the most interesting sample during an autopsy. You also have the possibility of testing oral fluid. Oral fluid is extremely important because when it comes to the winter period, probably you know better than me, if I have taken drugs today morning, then the possibility of having drug residues in my urine is very unlikely. But we can have the trices in oral fluid immediately after a few hours, as well as in blood. So if an accident has happened, and if you want to find out whether the driver is under the influence of drug or alcohol, there is no meaning of testing urine. The most appropriate sample to test is the oral fluid and the blood. If you wanted to test a driver in the roadside, whether he is in order to understand whether he is driving under the influence of drug and alcohol, the best possible way is to collect his oral fluid and test. So adding to this, uh, I, I had a meeting with the Kerala police as well as uh, with the Gujarat Forensic Science University, because in the last two months, I have given a lot of importance to India. I visited few states, including Kerala, and then I, I met uh, uh, the, the Mr. Manoj Ibrahim at the police headquarters, and we had a discussion about the oral fluid testing for drivers in the roadside. So the benefit here is collecting oral fluid is very simple. You can, you can just stop a person and uh, you can just collect a swab and put that sample into the biochip and you can test for oral fluid. Uh, so many cases, I don't know the situation in India, but when I visit uh, the, 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 the countries, especially the Arab countries, Middle Eastern countries, there is hell a lot of difficulty to get urine because culturally they have to have a toilet and you know accessible, ac accessible to the water. And the most disadvantage here is when the guys goes to the toilet for collecting the urine and if the water is available, there is a possibility you can dilute urine Thereby, you can dilute the concentration of the drug, and then you can mask the, mask the drug. But when it comes to biochip, you have a biomarker called uh, creatinine. So if the, if the urine is adulterated, if you add water or anything else into the, into the urine, that will be detected during the testing. It will come back and say, the analyzer will come back and say that the sample what you're using is not a perfect urine, it's an adulterated sample. Yeah? Hair is important because, as I said, if a dead body is being recovered after a month of death, getting biological, I mean, getting body fluids from that particular dead body is absolutely not possible. So if the particular person has hair, there's a possibility you can have a chip, and then you can also have an idea whether the particular person has been intoxicated or not. Now, collecting the hair is very, very important. And hair samples gives a lot of information, like uh, probably you know better than me, but uh, if you have six centimeter long hair, it can give you the prices for the drugs what the particular person has consumed during the last six months. In my understanding, the first one centimeter from the scalp gives the drug consumption for the last one month. And the second one centimeter gives the prices of drugs what he has consumed during the previous one month. And the third one centimeter gives the prices of drugs what the particular person has taken uh, around two months ago or in the, in the last three months. So this is important because if you're going for an interrogation or an investigation, it also helps you to find out which are the different kind of drugs this particular person has taken in the last six months. Because the fourth centimeter gives you the prices for cocaine. That means the particular person has taken cocaine four months ago. And then probably the second centimeter uh, gives LSD. That means the particular person has taken LSD 
before 30 days. Something like it helps you a lot to trace out the history of the particular trip the particular person has taken in the past. Okay, again, it's all are validated and you just need to use the samples according to the instructions given by Randox. The most beneficial advantage here is you do not need to do a sample treatment or a sample preparation. This is really making the life of a forensic toxicologist is to very simple manner because any analytical instrument need a prior sample preparation for any of the samples what you are going to test. However, oral fluid, blood, post-mortem blood and urine can be directly prepared to the biochip without any kind of sample treatment. This saves a lot of time. And of course, when it comes to hair, it is a solid sample. So you have to do a uh, pretreatment in order to do, I mean, the extraction of the sample. But the procedure is not very complicated. I have the procedure with me. So at the end of the presentation, I have, I'll, I'll be sharing my contact details. So if anybody interested to know about the hair testing and the sample treatment procedures, I'll be able to send you that procedures to you. Yeah. So moving forward, Randox has multiple biochip analyzers. So the objective of having multiple analyzers is to provide a suitable solution to different laboratories based on its requirement, based on its work volume. I mean, the number of samples, the process in a week or in a day or in a month. So <clears throat> we have a small analyzer called Multistat, which is fully automated suitable to manage up to 10 samples per day. And uh, this is validated for blood, urine, and saliva. So any of these samples can be tested on this small analyzer, where this is most suitable to manage up to 10 samples in one single day. Investigator is the second analyzer in the row, where this is a semi-automated platform. However, this is capable of managing up to 30, 40 samples in a day. So if, if your laboratory is receiving something like up to 40 samples or 30 samples, then I would recommend to go for an investigator platform. If your laboratory has more than 40 samples in a day, then the best choice is to go for an evidence or an evidence plus. Basically, there is no difference between these two analyses. Both are almost the same, but this is much more advanced. We launched this last year and the analysis is very fast in this analyzer. So if you need, if you have more samples and you need to get the results more faster, I would always recommend to go to Evidence Plus, which is slightly expensive than Evidence, but it serves the purpose of having something like up to 250, 300, or up to 400 samples in a day. Easily you can manage with Evidence Plus. Now we will go a little bit in detail with each of the analyzers. Now, here we have the multi-stat. So the multi-stat is designed to use even in a non-laboratory environment. So it's a beautiful piece of technology, analyzer Randox has ever developed. What you need to do is, here, you just need to collect the sample you just need to add the sample into the cartridge, load the sample and tip cartridges to the machine, and then you press the start button. You do not need to have any experience in toxicology. You do not need to have even a laboratory scientist. Anybody who know how to collect the sample can run this analyzer. So basically, if you are collecting saliva, you just collect the saliva. Put a little bit of saliva into the cartridge, insert the cartridge into the machine and press the start button. If you are testing with the urine, the same procedure. When it comes to blood, of course, you need to know how to collect the blood. And once the blood is collected, you follow the same procedure and it produces the result in 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, it produces, sorry, in 17 minutes, it produces the result for 20 various drugs. 
So as I explained earlier, biochip has different test regions and each test regions are represented by different type of drugs. So you can have up to 22 today. And then in multi-stat, you have the possibility of detecting 20 different drugs from that one single sample in less than 17 minutes of time. So because of its characteristics, as I mentioned, it can be used in a non-laboratory environment. This is suitable to use in different environments, like it can be used in the forensic laboratories, it can be used in the police stations, it can be used in the court itself. It is very suitable for roadside drug testing. As I mentioned a little while ago, we had a discussion with the Kerala police for the testing of drivers near the roadside, I mean, in the roadside for drugs of abuse and alcohol. Uh, when it comes to India, we have a great achievement, achievement because uh, if I'm correct, we did a study with uh, Lok Naik, Jay Prakash Narayan Center for Criminology and Forensic Science, the so-called LN chain uh, in New Delhi around eight months ago for, uh, for the usage of, I mean, for testing uh, drivers in roadside. So what we did is we, we provided a multi-stat and we provided the cartridges for oral fluid. And uh, according to me, the Ellen chain has collected samples from five major cities uh, around the nation, India, and we tested. So one of the cities, in my understanding, if I'm correct, uh, as per the information from our South Asian office, one of the city was Cochin in Kerala. And we found a lot of positive cases, not only for the common drugs and uh, there were considerable amount of synthetic drugs present in those samples. Now the government of India, the Home Ministry has requested us to do a secondary stage of evaluation uh, with Gujarat Forensic Science University. And we were preparing for that. And because of this COVID-19 situation, it had to be delayed for a while. So we will be continuing with that. And then our technology will be validated for uh, uh, you know, the, the roadside drug testing for drivers in India by Ellen Chain or, or the authorities who are authorized to give this approval within India to test drivers roadside. This is suitable to test in workplaces. If you want to know anybody is coming to your office or into your workplace after consuming drugs and alcohol, you can have a multi-stat, you can collect the sample and you can test it. Uh, this is important, especially in the mining industries, in the petroleum industries where which are highly accident prone areas where if someone comes with uh, or comes under the influence of drug or alcohol that can lead to you know the damages harms to the to the other colleagues as well as to the engineering systems there towards the safety if, if i generally speak uh, it can be used in prisons it can be used in the rehabilitation center and more interestingly it can be used in the post-mortem rooms so during my discussion with the most of the post-mortem surgeons Throughout the world, not only in India, wherever I go, I, whenever I speak to a postmortem surgeon, one of the difficulty, normally they say that we do a postmortem today and we send the samples to the forensic laboratory and the results come back uh, probably after six months. I won't blame the forensic laboratory here. The reason is the huge workload. And most of the time, the postmortem samples what people receive in the forensic laboratory, 80% of them or more than 80% of them would be negative. Only 20 or less than 20% turns positive. So if you have a multi stat in your postmortem facility, you can check the postmortem blood during the postmortem itself, during the autopsy itself. And within 17 minutes, you can identify the positive sample. And you just need to send only positive samples to the forensic laboratory for further analysis on an analytical system. All the negative samples you do not need to send, or even if you are sending, you can mention that we tested for all of these drugs and those turns negative. So if you want to test for any other drugs, then you can go for it. But on the other hand, it is a negative sample. That reduces the stress on a forensic lab a lot. And we see this trend in the United States of America a lot. A lot of postmortem uh, rooms in US started using the multi-stat. I can share you the con context if anybody would like to have a conversation with these guys and to know the experience of these people. So here I have a video explaining how a multi-stat works. You will be able to see it. It's very, very simple. So this is a cartridge 
where you just need to put the sample over there. There are biochips. So as I mentioned, you can test the drug in any environment. You can put it in office. You can collect the sample from your colleagues and you can test them within the office itself. You do not need to have a laboratory expert or you, are, you don't need to be a staff nurse or a doctor. It can be kept in a laboratory, forensic laboratory or clinical laboratory, wherever you want. Even in an accident emergency department within the hospital. You can also have this in the police stations. You do not need to send the samples, negative samples to the forensic laboratories to reduce the stress. As I mentioned, you can also have this in the mining industries or even in the petroleum industries and in the airline industries to test the cabin crews and the pilots before they take off the flight. So now it will show you how does it work. It's very simple to use. What you need to do is you just need to collect the sample, drop the sample into the cartridge, insert the cartridge into the machine, close the door and press the start button. It takes 17 minutes and in 17 minutes, it produces a result for 20 various drugs, which includes the common as well as the new psychoactive substances. <coughs> the same biochipper technology and that is the multi-stat. I hope the video helped you a lot to understand the system. Now, there are three cartridges for the system. If you are using oral fluid, saliva as your sample, the cartridge has 20 different drugs. So if you look into the menu from that single sample in 17 minutes, without any kind of preparation, you have the possibility of detecting FLACA, alpha PVP, you have amphetamine, barbiturase, benzodiazepine 1 and 2, basically oxycipam and lorazepam. You have benzolicon in the cocaine, buprenorphin, fentanyl, JWH018. JWH018 is a synthetic cannabinoid. You have ketamine, you have LSD, you have methadone, you have methamphetamine, you have opiate, you have oxycodone, you have fencyclidine, you have pregabalin. Pregabalin is a very, uh, I don't know the reason, it is widely abused in Middle Eastern countries. I'm not sure the situation in India. I had discussion with uh, some guys in, if I remember correctly, in Chandigarh, and they were concerned about pregabalin. So we have pregabalin on board. We have THC. We also have tramadol. Tramadol is also widely abused in many, many countries, and I, I assume probably in India also. We have UR144, XLR11. This is again the synthetic cannabinoid. And we have six mom, that is a heroin metabolite. So when it comes to LSD, I recently uh, listened uh, to one of the report came out from India that during the COVID-19 lockdown, since the alcohol availability was very limited or completely nil, uh, the, the abuse with LSD has elevated a lot. So LSD is widely abused in, in, in India. And there's a possibility here you can test it with oral fluid. That means hell a lot of guys who are driving in the street under the influence of LSD can be captured by a roadside drug testing on their saliva sample. If you are moving forward, if you are using your whole blood and urine as a sample, it is almost a similar panel, but there are few differences. Here you can test ethyl glucuronide Ethyl glucuronide is the alcohol metabolite. So if somebody is under the influence of alcohol, you can test his blood and it produces the result for alcohol along with the other drugs. So this is really benefited because normally the forensic toxicologists or clinical toxicologists are do, need to do separate tests for alcohol and separate tests for drugs of abuse. However, when it comes to randox, 
in single biochip, you have the possibility of testing a person for blood or urine for alcohol along with the common drugs. It also includes abipinaca, or some people call it as pinaca. Abipinaca is a synthetic drug. Then you have also you are one double four XLR double one. This is another synthetic drug. You have JW018 here. You have the methamphetamines, TCA, pregabalin, and tramadol also. So if anybody is interested to test pregabalin, tramadol, and synthetic drugs on blood and urine panel, it is a comprehensive test panel already with Randox. Moving forward, that was multi-stat. And the investigator, as I mentioned, it is a semi-automated platform, which is <coughs> suitable to test up to 30 samples in, in one single day or 30, 40 samples in one single day. What does it mean by semi-automated? Semi-automated is slightly different than multi-stat. Here, you need to pipette your sample, you need to pipette your reagents, then you need to do the incubation by yourself, and then finally you need to add your signal reagent, and then you insert the cartridge into the machine. So uh, the, the technician need to work a bit. So this has to be used only in a laboratory environment. It cannot be used in a non-laboratory environment because you really need to have a laboratory expertise here because there is a calibration involved, there is a quality control test involved, and there is a test protocol involved. When it comes to multi-stat, it is electronically calibrated, so you don't need to calibrate it. Uh, then quality control test is also automated while doing the test. So you don't need to do a separate quality control test. If you want, you can do it, but it is not mandatory. But when it comes to investigator, it's all involved. So you need to have a laboratory expertise to run the system. Yeah, but it is a uh, very, very, very simple and very useful system for a forensic lab. It is very diverse in multi-stat. You cannot run hair samples. But when it comes to investigator, it is validated for hair samples also. So any kind of samples, whatever you get, postmortem blood, urine, or hair, saliva, tissue, whatever you want, uh, you can test it in on an investigator platform. Uh, in India, we have uh, three investigators installed already. One is in the prestigious Mumbai Forensic Laboratory. Uh, one is in the All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi and the other one is in the Goa Medical College. So uh, we are in final discussion with a few of the forensic laboratories, I think including the Jaipur, uh, Jaipur Forensic Lab, Chandigarh Forensic Lab, uh, etc. So my South Asian office knows better than me. So there are a few coming in the coming days. Uh, we are also planning to do a evaluation of our technology with the Gujarat Forensic Science University, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So next is the evidence analyzer. As I mentioned, evidence is something like for a huge workload, something like 40, anything above 40 to, I can easily say up to 400 samples in a day. So here you have two sample carousels. One has the capacity of 90 and the other one has the capacity of another 90. So altogether you can keep 180 samples in one single go. The reagents are loaded here, the biochips are loaded here. You have the waste container, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, here. Here, if you if your institution has the lab, has the laboratory information system or what how can I say the barcode system, you just need to put the sample barcode on your test tube and put those test tubes in the sample carousel and you just go and start the run. The instrument will read the barcode. It will communicate with your server and will identify the identity of the particular sample and it will do the test completely and transfer the result back your, back your server saying that for this particular case number or the particular sample number, these are the drugs turns positive. The one of the benefit which I mentioned, uh, which I forgot to mention is the cutoff. So we normally work with the, the international cutoffs according to the EU regulations. However, if any country has a different cutoff regulation for any drugs on any sample matrix, we are able to adjust it. So there are two ways. You can let us know in advance so that during the manufacturing stage, 
we can set the cutoff to the desired cutoff what you want in your country or in your laboratory secondly you yourself can do it in the software so during the analysis uh, or oh, sorry prior to the analysis if you if you want to change the cutoff uh, there is a possibility that you can change the cutoff for any particular drug uh, due to the confidentiality of the result uh, the toxicology especially in the toxicology testing once you set your work list and you start the testing nothing can be edited once you start the testing the results will be produced and even the administrator level user cannot do anything or can, can cannot do any kind of editing in the result once the test is accepted and start running so this is to keep the safety and security of the result so we covered the matrices we covered the different analyses now we are going into the test menu so as i mentioned earlier with the capability of randox research and development team we always proudly say we are the company holding the world largest test menu so we cover the classical drugs the common drugs and the new psychoactive substances also the new synthetic drugs so we have different type of biochips what we call the standard biochips and one of the biochip is called drugs of abuse array ultra or duid the forensic will know what is duid driving under the influence of drug it is an eu regulation if you are testing a driver to find out whether he is under the influence of drug and alcohol you need these are the drugs which is stipulated or recommended in the eu regulation that is the duid regulation so we made a biochip dedicated which is 100% in accordance with the duid regulations so the most of the cutoffs are cutoffs here are in accordance with the duid regulation so in european countries this is called duid and when it comes to any country outside eu it will be labeled as doi ultra so this has the amphetamine barbiturates benzos cocaine buprenorphine thc dextromethorphan fentanyl generic opioids meprobamide methadone methamphetamine opiate oxycodone 1 and 2 fencyclidin tramadol tricyclic antidepressants and solpidum so there are possibilities of testing all of them in one single go with the use of DOI Ultra or DOID. Uh, we have so many different type of standard biochips. It will be really difficult for me to display all of them, but I'm just displaying the most important one over the screen. Then I'll go through, we will go through the complete test menu. So you will have a complete understanding what is possible with Randox. So NPS1, NPS stands for the new psychoactive substances, the new generation synthetic drug. So we have two different biochips which are the standard biochips from Randox, which is ready at any point of time. The first one is dedicated mostly for the synthetic cannabinoids. So if you look here, this has the bath salts. You have the bath salts one and bath salts two. You have the benzylpiprasins, you have mescalines, phenylpiprasins one, phenylpiprasins two. You have the salvinorin. Salvia is a drug which is heavily abused in Jordan. I, I'm not sure how, how it is in India, but uh, when I to Jordanian police, I understand that it's heavily, heavily abused in Jordan. I don't know the reason, but other than that, we have the JW018, you have the UR144, you have AB Shiminaka, AB Pinaka, and you also have the AB Fubinaka here in the NPS1 track. Yeah, uh, there are two matrices available today basically, urine and blood, the other matrices are in development. But again, as a forensic toxicologist, you will be knowing better than me saying that uh, changing the sample matrices is not a difficult thing. The only thing is the cutoff. You need to understand what would be the appropriate cutoff to be chosen if you are testing hair for NPS1. So that is the only area where you have a conflict. But if, even if you are testing hair on our blood biochip for NPS1, it will detect the drugs, but then whether to decide it as a positive sample or a negative sample, you need to decide on cutoff. So that is the agreement what basically we do during our validation. So that is pending and we are working on that. Uh, NPS2, the new psychoactive substances 2RA is basically for 
synthetic opioids and synthetic benzodiazepines. So there is a beautiful menu uh, with the synthetic opioids and synthetic benzodiazepines. I'm, I'm sure that many of the forensic toxicologists and forensic experts are interested to this, but the availability in the market for a screening methodology is very unlikely. So if you look into the complete test menu under the group of analgesics, we have all these drugs, including the heroin, amphetamines, so many of them. It's really difficult for me to read everything. But the important things are, as I mentioned, you have the pregabalin, then you have the salicylate, you have the tramadol, then you have opiates, you have oxycodones, you have the ibuprofen also here. So, so many and so many of them. I'll share this presentation with that each and everyone so that you will have the complete test menu in your in your in your in your in your laptop. So when you move to the uh, prescription drugs, again there is a huge test menu. So if you look, we have hell a lot of prescription drugs. Probably you are interested into it. Again, it would be really difficult for me to read everyone. The most important things are so many of them are present there probably you are whatever you are looking for i think people are interested for the valproic acid so many times people discuss about this to me going forward we have the huge menu for new psychiatric substances as i mentioned earlier it has so many synthetic cannabinoids synthetic opioids and synthetic benzodiazepines we also have the, under the group of sedative hypnotics, we have the barbiturates, benzos, phonetrazepam, ketamine, methacron, not ketamine, phenobarbital. Phenobarbital is probably many people are interested for. And if you look here, salplon, solpidum, and sopicon. I think these are the drugs. Some of them are really interested by a forensic expert. Uh, while investigating a rape case because if somebody is sexually abused uh, this is not to the accused the victim will be tested for these kind of drugs because it, this is uh, sedative drugs which will help the victim to sleep fall asleep very fast so that probably the accused would have given some kind of sedative drugs to the particular victim and then you know that will lead the person to sleep fast and then you can uh, sexually abuse the particular lady so not only for sexual abuses i was just following the news recently what happened in a murder of a lady in in kerala uh, there was news coming out that the husband itself the accused was i mean accused has given certain sedative drugs the police is suspecting that certain sedative drugs has been injected or given to the not injected to give one to his wife or to the to the victim, the, the, the person, the lady who died. So in order to test those sedative drugs, there is a possibility, even with the uh, postmortem blood <coughs> or, you know, postmortem urine, uh, it can be tested from that particular body or the autopsy sample. We have also the stimulants, uh, the MDMA, so many of them. And then we have also the other test menu, as I mentioned, there is gabapentin. I'm not sure how you are interested in India for gabapentin, but uh, so many of my customers, whenever I have a technical discussion, many of them are interested for gabapentin. Then phenylpiprazines, alcohol, and you, you can also test. Even if I mean, you know, overdose of Viagra. If you, if you, if you, if if there are any cases of uh, testing for overdoses of Viagra, there is a possibility for testing those also. So looking into this. Uh, what I want to summarize is, uh, it is the world largest test menu, as I mentioned earlier. Such a world toxic, large, I mean, such a large, vast toxicology test menu is normally not available with any screening platform. So here, the benefit is you have different sample matrices which are already validated, including urine, saliva, blood, postmortem blood, hair, tissue and meconium are in development. And remember, if the sample is a liquid sample, 
then you do not need a sample pretreatment or a sample preparation. You, you're going to directly prepare the sample into the biochip. So that saves hell a lot of time. Then the matrices are validated. So if you are getting an analytical instrument, you need to validate the particular matrix and the drug in your laboratory. For that, you need to get a lot of drug standards and the validation is not a easy task. It is a tedious task. Getting the, tox getting the drug standards is one of the most difficult thing in India. If you buy, whenever you are buying uh, Randox kits, the standards are coming within the kit. So you don't need to order it separately. You just order the biochip and the biochip come with all the standards, all the quality controls, et cetera, et cetera, within the kit. So there is no technical issue for importing the kits to India. Uh, and it is validated. So you just need to use it. The second thing, what you need to remember is the analyzers suitable to various throughputs and various environments. For a low throughput laboratory to a high throughput laboratory, you have the option of choosing the analyzer. So you have the option of choosing the matrix, you have the option of choosing the analyzer, and then you have the option of choosing the drugs. This is something which makes the biochip revolutionary or exemptionary. The reason is, it is not the standard panel what Randox produces, or it is not a Randox says that you test for these drugs. It is your choice. So what do you need to do to any Randox employee? If you wanted to test any of those drugs, you just tell us which are Anil, the drugs. Hello, Anil. Yeah. Anil, yeah. just uh, your screen is out. Please uh, re-upload. OK. I mean, it's not yet ready. Please yeah, re-upload. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sharing it oh. now. Okay. Yeah. Is it visible now? Not yet. Is it? No? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, carry so on. So you are in the, you are in the customizable test menu screen, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So as I mentioned, this is one of the biggest advantage with Randox that you just need to tell which drug you want to test. You, you tell us the panel. I need to test the common drugs. I need to do the sedative drugs. I need to test the synthetic drugs or the combination of all these. And we make a customized panel for you. Anil, Anil, sorry to interrupt. Uh, your screen yeah. is again out. Uh -huh. mm. Some persons are accidentally sharing their screen. Ah, OK. OK, I'm sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> so is it visible to you yes i will carry on oh yeah so secondly what you need to say is you need to tell us what is the cutoff you want for each drug and you tell us what is the matrix you want to test, whether it is a postmortem blood or a whole blood, saliva or urine. And then we make a completely dedicated biochip for your particular laboratory. So according to the engine regulations, we can make a separate biochip and that can be tested at your laboratory. Yeah, you don't need to stress out on the standard biochips which is available from Randox. So I think I have already explained the benefit of having biochip or a technology for postmortem because of the sample matrices, then because of the wide, wide test menu, because of the different type of analysis, it is possible to test the sample within the postmortem room and the positive samples can be sent to the forensic laboratories. And <clears throat> from the dead bodies while doing the autopsy, if there is a difficulty to get the fluids, then you have the possibility of testing, uh, you know, the 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 uh, the higher samples, and uh, there is a active discussion uh, going on in India for testing the stomach content 
So we are seriously considering about validating stomach content uh, on, on biochiparate technology, especially for the suicide cases, if I understand correctly. So this is something which is very important. Today morning, uh, again, Dr. Uh, Jay Gumar and Nair uh, was mentioning about the accuracy of the test. It is extremely important. Okay, a false positive is still okay, but a false negative is absolutely not acceptable. So what we did is, in fact, what not Randox did, what the the Bournemouth University in UK did is, we they did a study, a uh, correlative study between biochipare with their confirmatory methods, the 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 the, the liquid chromatography mass spectrometry systems. So. It was blood samples. They did more than 200 samples. Uh, not only blood, I'm sorry. It was urine, vitreous humor, liver, and muscle samples. They tested it on our blood biochip. And this is the comparison between the percentage of agreement between the confirmatory analysis and the biochip array technology. So if you look here, most of the drugs which was involved in the study, like the barbiturates, benzos, methamphetamine, oxycodone, opioids, opiates, TCA, amphetamine, etc., etc. all of them having more than 95% of correlation. And one, the salvinorin has slightly, there's a decrement, I don't, know the, I don't know the reason, but there is a decrease only for salvinorin, but on average, most of the drugs were present for more than more than 95%. So on an average, we always claim that biochiparate technology is 97.5% agreement with confirmatory methodology. So the possibilities of getting a false positive result from a biochiparate platform is quite unlikely. The upcoming development is something which is very interested. So this discussion started within our research and development, basically for India. When we visited different forensic laboratories in India, there is a huge requirement or request to have a biochip for testing pesticides. There are a lot of suicide cases in India, within India, and there is a huge difficulty in testing the stomach content or the postmortem blood for identifying the pesticides the particular person has taken to commit suicide. So we put forward the request to our research and development we have developed a biochip with most of these uh, different type of pesticides like the organochloro insecticides, organophosphorus insecticides, all of them. And cyanide and methyl alcohol is in development. That is the reason why I put this as a yellow color here. But it is in development and probably in, in few, few months time, those will be ready. So in one single biochip, all of these pesticides will be available and first we will be validating it with the with the investigator for a whole blood biochip again as i said matrix is just for cutoff so if if the biochip is capable of detecting the antibodies then uh, there is no issues to validate it on another sample matrix the only agreement we need to have is on the cutoff Okay, so this is one of the recent development. This is available now. All of these in the white color are available. So if, if, if you're going for a investigator system, then you have the possibility of testing all the drugs alongside the pesticides from different biological sample. So nowadays, if we talk about anything scientific, there is no meaning of missing COVID-19. Everybody is talking about COVID-19. So, Randox has developed a highly sensitive test for the sars corona virus 2, the so-called COVID-19, and it is available on two platforms. One is called a fully automated vivalytic analyzer. This is very similar to Multistat, if you remember, and we have COVID testing in the investigator platform also. So investigator is semi-automated, Vivalitic is fully automated. So Vivalitic is as similar as Multistat. You do not need to have a laboratory expert or you do not need to have a laboratory in fact. What you need to do is you just need to take the swab, 
throat swab or a nasal swab, pipet the sample into the cartridge, insert the cartridge into the machine, and in two and a half hour time, if the particular sample has the presence of such coronavirus 2 or COVID-19, that will be detected along with nine other viruses. So again, biochip is always a panel test testing. It is a multiplexing technology. So it detects the presence of COVID-19 from one sample along other nine viruses. The panel is important here. The reason is, assume that you have a symptomatic person. He has all the symptoms for COVID-19, but you can also have the sim symptoms with other flu. It should not be COVID-19 at all the time. So when you test with a panel, if it turns negative for COVID-19, you will directly get an in in indication or information that which is the other virus is infected with. So that makes a lot of relief to the healthcare facility, to the hospital, as well as to the particular individual. Because nowadays, if you cough, you suspect COVID-19 and you test COVID-19 is negative. So directly give the indication or the result for the other virus he's infected for. So if you look here, there is something called surface swabs. Surface swabs is very, very important. So if you if you all know, I mean, I mean, not if you all know that there are only two ways the COVID-19 get transmitted or infected from one person to the other. One is a direct infection from an infected person. Like when he's sneezing or coughing, you have the possibilities of having the uh, aerosols, then you get infected for COVID-19. The second possibility is, the only second possibility is getting infected from a contaminated surface, like a person sneezed or coughed, and the aerosols were in the in the surface, or the the infected person touch the contaminated hand touch some of the surfaces, and the surface is contaminated. A third person or a second person comes and touch the same contaminated surface and get infected to the virus. So a contaminated surface is equally dangerous as a infected person. So in Randox on biochip we validated for surface swab also. So you can take the swab from a surface, you can test it on our investigator, and you can find out whether the surface has, like in the offices, in, in, in wherever you want to test, you have the possibility of testing the surface also with our investigator system. So as I mentioned, this is completely non-laboratory environment. There are so many situations where, you know, probably the post-mortem cases, if you want to test for COVID-19, uh, I don't know what is the protocol in India, but if you want to, there is a huge requirement in United States in the postmortem laboratories for Vivalitic nowadays. You don't need to have a RNA laboratory. You don't need to have a DNA laboratory. Uh, basically, you don't need to have a molecular laboratory. You can have a uh, Vivalitic in the postmortem facility, and you can collect the sample, put it inside the machine, and you can decide whether the particular person was infected with uh, COVID-19 or not. This is also possible with biochipper technology. This is absolutely um, outside the box of toxicology, but I thought this is the period where everybody talking about COVID-19, so I will share a slide of this, yeah? Then something which is very important uh, with Randox is the customer support. So this is, I'm not pricing my company just because I'm working with Randox. I work with many other companies, but there is a huge difference when it comes to Randox toxicology. The toxicology testing is, very, uh, it's medical legal. It is, uh, it is, it has its own confidentiality. So whenever you have a system which need to be installed in your laboratory, uh, we will be sending one of our customer support scientists from our uh, Randox headquarters from UK to the facility to install the system to train on the assay protocol as well as on the management of the instrument. So this is this will be done directly by a Randox scientist coming from UK. Uh, if you have any issues related to the uh, you know to the results, like correlation issues with the confirmatory methodologies or correlation issues with other screening methodologies, 
what you need to do is you just need to send an email to support at randockstoxicology.com. There are 14 uh, customer support scientists 20, available in Randox 24 seven, and you will be contacted with an email, with a phone call or any other communication medium to assist and to troubleshoot on the issue. If we could not resolve that, then there is a possibility that any Randox analyzer installed in anywhere in the world, we can connect that analyzer to Randox headquarters. So our technical experts, including the research and development scientists, can look into the system remotely from UK and find out what went wrong and come back and say that during the test, this is the error which has happened and that led to this kind of problem. So these are the extraordinary support we provide to our customers uh, in order to ensure that our technology is producing the most accurate result uh, in any other than any other screening toxicology platform in the world today. Yeah. So that's all from me today. So thank you for listening. As I mentioned, here is my email ID and here is my mobile number. You can note it down. Uh, I'm available in WhatsApp also on this number. So if anybody wanted to ask any questions, uh, you can ask in the chat room. I'll be able to assist you there. Or you can send it uh, in the uh, chat room and I'll be able to, uh, you know, give an answer now itself. Anil, actually, there are some questions already in the chat box. You can just uh -huh. go to that one and give some of the clarification yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going into the chat room now. Uh, I'm looking into, I'm pressing into the questions. Sorry. Yeah, so there is a question asked by Anusha. What if the chemiluminescence shown by two or more drugs uh, are same or overlap? How to differentiate? Example, barbiturates and benzodiazepines belongs to same class of drug depressants. Uh, also, barbiturates are of two type of long acting barbiturates and short acting barbiturates. Uh, how to differentiate that on a basis of chemiluminescence? So this is a wonderful question. So uh, if you look into the, uh, I mean, biochip, our test region for barbiturates is different and the test region for benzodiazepines are different. So you will be definitely getting separate results for barbiturates and separate results for benzodiazepine. I think the confusion arised because the camera is detecting the light from each test region. It is not from the complete biochip. So the light emitted from each test region is individually quantified and converting into concentration. So the light emitted from barbiturates test region spot is separately calculated. So you will get the concentration there. Yes, of course, you will not be able to differentiate the different type of barbiturates because if any of the barbiturates present, that will be detected by the barbiturate spot. And that is the reason we say it as a screening methodology. So definitely, if you need to understand what type of barbiturates is that classification of the barbiturate, then you will have to go to an analytical instrument. I, I mean, basically LCMS or a GCMS to identify the particular drug compound. I hope that answer your question. If you need further explanation, you can contact me over email. Uh, the next question is, recent drug consumption can be found from area close to root of hair right. As the time lapses, the drug prices shift towards tip of the hair. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, for me, 
or according to me, if you want to trace the recent consumption, hair is not a right choice because uh, the uh, on average the characteristics of the hair on our head is like one centimeter. It grows one centimeter in a month. Okay, basically this is the characteristics of the hair in our head. So uh, if you really wanted to trace the recent drug consumption, hair hair will not give a accurate value because what you are what you are getting the first one centimeter from the scalp is the drug he has taken in the last thirty days because that is the hair grown in the last thirty days. Okay, that is only in the head. Uh, if you are taking any body hair, then we cannot compare it in that way because that is not growing one centimeter every every month. It's only in head. So if you really wanted to test the drug consumption for the recent recent period, uh, you you need to test either saliva. I mean the the, the same day. You, if you want to trace the drug consumption for the same day, the best solution is saliva or blood. And for a week, two week. Some of the drugs will be present in urine for two weeks also. So urine, blood and saliva would be the best option for testing recent drug consumption. Uh, the next question is, there is Afrin Sona. She's asking, using this tip for oral fluid analysis, would, would we get the percentage of alcohol present in the sample? Uh, no, we don't have ethyl alcohol on our oral fluid panel. So oral fluid, you cannot detect um, alcohol uh, in an oral fluid biochip. So if you want to test for alcohol, then you need to use either the biochip for blood or biochip for urine. And it is a metabolite, ethyl glucuronide. Yeah, I believe that answered the question. And there is a question from Sweda Singh asking, I want to know about hair testing. Oh, okay, it's a, it's a request. So Sweda, I would request you to send me an email so that I'll be able to share, or you can note down my number and you can share your uh, email ID to my WhatsApp so that I will be able to provide you the hair testing uh, protocol in that. The next question from Anchu is how biochip or a technology is differ from Elisa, which one is most suitable? Yeah. So, biochipper technology and Elisa is basically both are immunoassay. The only difference here is uh, we are multiplexing. So, when it comes to drugs of abuse testing, especially in a forensic toxicology, you 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 basically don't know what type of drugs a particular person has been taken or would have been taken. So, in Elisa, it is monoplex. If you want to test amphetamine, you have to do one testing for amphetamine. The second testing for barbiturates, the second ELISA test for cocaine. So basically, if you want to test for 20 different drugs, then you need to do 20 different ELISA tests. And ELISA tests are normally less accurate because of the manual intervention. However, by a chip is multiplexing. You have the possibility of having different tests run at the same time on a single platform. So the results are provided. And we have an excellent correlation study with the confirmatory methodologies already done by different universities around the world. And that already proven that it is a best and accurate technology for forensic toxicology. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, spot detection. This is from Ranjita Rajan. Rajita, sorry, Rajita Rajan. Spot detection of drugs are possible with this technology. Is it economic? Spot detection of drugs are possible with this technology. Is it economic? I, I, I don't understand what you mean by spot detection of drugs. Uh, you mean whether you want to test? I mean, it may be rapid detection, as you mentioned in the last oh, okay. detection. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, see, um, we, we have an analyzer called Multistat for roadside drug testing, as I explained. So there is a rapid testing device available with randox yeah is it economic uh, uh, i mean see uh, how can i answer this question like uh, i mean this is something which is which you need to compare i mean basically what platform what is your what is your objective that will lead that will answer this question i, I mean i cannot give an answer directly saying that whether it is economic or not okay but 
keep in mind that price is secondary. If you feel that uh, the technology is going to be beneficial for your institution, please let us know. We are open to discuss and uh, we, can, we can talk about the prices. It should be economic for you. Then there is the next question from Mona Devi. Can multi-state analyzer used only for body, body fluid sample? Yes, of course, yeah. I mean, you, you, you have the complete privilege to choose what type of sample you want to test, whether you want to test it for urine, blood, or saliva, or you want to test all, it is only up to you. I mean, completely up to you. I mean, the same analyzer, the same software for any of the body fluids. Uh, the next question is from Supriya. Due to network, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, may I know why is that everyone? I'm sorry, sorry. That is not a question. Uh, yeah, so there is a question from Amrit. Apart from toxicological application, does biochip can be designed in such a way to analyze uh, analyze the postmortem changes? Apart from toxicology application, does biochip can be designed in such a way to analyze the postmortem changes? I, I, honestly speaking, I don't understand this question, uh, uh, Amrit. So uh, please note down my contact number. Chat with me in WhatsApp. I, I'll give you a call. Once you provide me your contact number and we can discuss, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry for that. I, I did not understand your question completely. The sec next question is uh, Saumita Konar. What kind of antibody is used to monoclonal or polyclonal antibody and chemiluminescence is used in which antibody primary or secondary? Uh, it is a uh, horse, horse radish peroxide. Uh, the questions are asked. Sorry, I missed the questions. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, and it's okay. You can go on to the next question. No problem. Ah, okay. So the completely. We will provide your contact details to the participants. Yeah. So, so everyone. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a question from Rajalakshmi. If I miss any questions, as Dr. Shiva said, you can email me. You said that there is no need of extraction procedure. Then after taking oral swabs, how can it be needed in the cartridge? Oh, yeah, this is uh, fantastic. So uh, if you know the oral fluid collection devices, you will have a swab. You keep the swab under your tank and then the swab you are putting into a container. Normally, I mean, this is the normal oral fluid collection device, collection uh, device. So you put the swab into a container, that container will have a buffer solution. So that buffer solution normally will have three milliliter. It is like a transport medium. So that three milliliter, we need only 250 microliter for testing in biochip. So the remaining uh, 1.75 uh, milliliter or 1,750 1, microliter, you can use for further confirmatory analysis if any drugs turns positive. Uh, and the next question is how the hair can be fitted yes so hair you cannot put directly into the biochip you need to have a sample extraction chemical extraction uh, we have the chemical extraction procedure ready it is validated by randox uh, let me know your email id rajalakshmi i'll be able to send you the hair extraction procedure directly to you yeah then there is a question from Prashant, what is lowest concentration required? Very good. So our limit of detection is really very low. It is highly sensitive. Our calibration starts from nearly zero. So biochipper normally detects very, very low concentrations. And if you know the EU regulations, uh, EU regulation, many of the countries are zero tolerance towards the drugs so that if the person has taken any kind of drugs in certain environment, that is a crime. Uh, however, it, when it goes to the American regulations, there is a little bit of flexibility, higher cutoffs, but EU regulations are very strict and stringent. A biochipper technology is 100% advanced in accordance with the EU regulations. So very, very low concentrations can be detected, highly sensitive. And uh, it is different for different type of drugs. So again, if you want to know for particular drugs on particular metrics, 
please let me know. Contact me on my email. I'll be able to share that information to you. Uh, then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, there is a comment from Aparna. It is right that the macodes on a decomposing body can be used as a substrate for the toxicological investigation. If yes, can you tell how we can detect that? Uh, I, I, I don't have a straight answer to this. I need to, con I need to check with our research and development team. Uh, I will come back to you on this. So what I would request is you please let me know uh, your contact ID. Send me a WhatsApp or send me an email uh, with your query. I will I will get back to you on this. Whether the Randox text, test result is accepted as by your Scott. Now, uh, Sivadarshan, this is screening. This helps you to identify the drug residues in the biological fluids. You definitely need to uh you know to confirm it with a confirmatory methodology but the benefit is if you need to test for 45 sorry 44 various drugs including the synthetic drugs and common drugs in a analytical platform that is not an easy job so what most of the forensic labs do is they will have a spinning platform like multiplexing platform like randox in the beginning and they identify the positive sample the positive drugs and then verify those positives in a confirmatory platform. On the other hand, it is going to be a very tedious task for you. Uh, yeah, the next question is, can it be used for blood grouping? I don't think so. Uh, then There is a question from Hasena. If the body is decomposed, what is the possibility of getting drugs from body fluids? Yeah. Uh, so the postmortem blood, uh, it is always a nasty sample, very sticky, very thick sample. So, I mean, when, it, when you're collecting it from a decomposed body, uh, there is a procedure. What you can do is you, you need to centrifuge it for a certain time in certain RPM. And uh, of course, uh, doing a centrifugation in a forensic laboratory is not, not a difficult thing. And then you can aspirate, uh, you know, 120 microliter from the top layer, and then you can pipette that into the biochip. So getting 120, 120 microliter is a very small oleum, and that is the required oleum for blood on a biochip. So you just need to centrifuge and then aspirate it from the top, top part. Then the there is a question again biochip is available for direct detection of drugs like lsd mdma methamphetamine cocaine etc other than body fluids um yeah the de okay i understand the question now so she wants to know whether we can use the use it for the detection of direct compounds if you have a unknown unknown chemical compound and you want to find out whether it is LSD or MDMA. Yeah, I, I, I assume that this is your question. Yeah. So no, we are. It's not validated. Basically, I mean, we we did not validate it for uh, the direct chemicals or direct compounds. Uh, what we detect is mostly the metabolites. Uh, however, uh, there are few forensic laboratories and universities using biochip for the detection of chemical compounds directly. What they do normally is they dissolve the, uh, the, the drug compound into a ne negative urine, into a truly negative urine, and test it on a, you know, on a uh, urine biochip. So it will detect the drug, and then you can confirm it on an analytical platform. But it is not validated from Randox, so that Randox will not take the responsibility for any wrongdoings in the result or in the assay protocol. Anil, uh, you can skip the repeated question. Uh, we are out of yeah. time, actually. Oh, yeah. Can you share that extraction procedure? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is biochip toxic technology available for animal toxins such as snake venom? Uh, so far, no. But it is a good thing we can consider. Uh, if you can, if you can share with me the real requirement, uh, I will I will have a discussion with our research and development team and see the possibility to develop that. It is something which is very interesting. Uh, biochip can be used for metallic toxins and plant toxins. Um, there are few, but not all. So let me know, Amrit, which one you are specifically looking for. Like recently, we developed assay for detura plants. Uh, this was a request came from Iraq. We developed it. So you, you just let me know which are which are the specific toxins you are looking for and then I will come back to you. I mean, what is the possibility? It is possible. Uh, yeah. Then there is a question from Mr. Kunju Muhammad for sample preparation is required for surface sample. So, this is molecular. Um, I'm not a molecular expert, but uh, if I answer your question indirectly, what I understand is, of course, you need a sample uh, preparation for the surface swabs because it is it is molecular testing. So primarily you need to do a RNA extraction and then you need to do an amplification and then finally you need to do the detection. So sample preparation is a must. Uh, you, you, the, in, in, Vivalitic, in Vivalitic, you don't need a sample preparation. In Vivalitic, you can collect the swab and you can put it into the cartridge and you can run it. But uh, surface swabs uh, are not, uh, will not work in Vivalitic. The reason is there is a internal testing going on in Vivalitic to find out the uh, human tissues. So if human tissues are not present in, in the sample, then the Vivalitic will produce a error. So it will not produce a result. But on investigator, you can test the surface swaps. Um, and of course, you need a sample preparation. Yeah. So all those covers all the questions, I think. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, the contact number I have already shared. Biochip can differentiate different drug by different. I mean, there is a question from Pragati. I did not understand that question completely. You can ask me directly in my email. Uh, and then you can skip some questions. No yeah, problem. Yeah. yeah. So I think we, we run out of the time. So that's from me. Whatever questions I did not answer, apologies from my side in managing the time. Uh, so you can contact me directly. And uh, once again, my sincere thanks on behalf of Randox Toxicology and personally to all the management committee organizers of Indian Criminology and Forensic Science Association uh, to give the opportunity to give us the opportunity to present our technology in front of the you know the scientific community in India.